Barigandian Hotep family, this is Asad Malik. I'm the editor of the PanAfricanAlliance.com and I write the majority of the articles that you find there. So if you are like me, you might not always have time to read one of the long 3,000 word articles that I write. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to record them. Uh, now, this isn't going to be me just reading off the article. I'm going to put a little flavor into it. Got some nice background beats and I'll make little side commentaries to help further illustrate what the article is about. But I think this is a little more convenient for you because you can listen to this article as you go about your business and uh, you're still going to get 100% of the information contained in the article. With that being said, you will still need to go to panafricanalliance.com to access some of the links that I talk about or to see some of the visuals that I use to illustrate uh, the point. But for the most part, this works right here. So uh, if you're feeling this, let me know by leaving a comment. Make sure you're sharing this. Help us achieve our mission of spreading black consciousness. So this article is um, the story and the meaning behind the RBG flag, the untold story and meaning behind the RBG flag. You can find this article by going to panafricanalliance.com forward slash RBG. The RBG flag is probably the most recognizable symbol of Pan-Africanism. Uh, this is the flag with the three bars, red, black, and green in that order. Sometimes this flag is mistaken for the so-called African-American flag, but it is not that. And since its history and meaning aren't really taught in Western circles, many who are new to the black conscious community might not understand why we use red, black, and green as our colors. Family, the red, black, and green are the red, white, and blue of black consciousness, all right, if you're in the West. And they have very specific meanings that every black man, woman, and child should know. And since we're not getting this education in the public school system, I mean the public school system, uh, I'm going to give you that right here, right now. So here's the story behind the RBG flag. This was a flag that was first designed and used by Marcus Garvey. If you're not familiar with Marcus Garvey, he's one of the founding fathers of Pan-Africanism. And um, he was also the creator of the Universal Negro Improvement Association back in 1920, the UNIA. The UNIA was the largest mass movement in Pan-African history. Millions of members across uh, dozens and dozens of countries worldwide. And again, this is before the internet. This is in the 1920s. This is a little while after slavery. Many members were uh, unified within the UNIA. The UNIA and Marcus Garvey's template are the template that all Pan-African and Black conscious organizations, including ours at the Pan-African Alliance, and others like United Black America follow. Anyway, so back in 1900, there was a racist song called Every Race Has a Flag But the Coon. And it was one of the hottest songs at, of the time among uh, white Americans, right? In fact, that's where the term coon came from in reference to black men and women, this 1900 song. Now, when Marcus Garvey heard this song, he was so infuriated that he commissioned a flag to serve as the standard of Pan-Africanism. And that was, the, of course, the RBG flag. When he commissioned that flag, he said, show me the race or the nation without a flag, and I will show you a race of people without any pride, eh? In song and mimicry, they've said every race has a flag, but the coon? How true until now. That was said of us four years ago, and now they can't say that. And that's what he said, Marcus Garvey, in the Declaration of Rights of the Negro Peoples of the World. That document was drafted and adopted at the convention of the Universal Negro Improvement Association that was held in New York uh, in uh, 1920 on August the 13th. In fact, it was held right in Madison Square Garden. And I want you all to imagine that it's the 1920s. There are still thousands and thousands of black men and women who remember slavery, who grew up on plantations. Black men and women were being lynched. We're talking about decades before the beginning of the Black Power era, the Civil Rights era. The vast majority of Africa was still under colonial rule. And here we have this gathering of hundreds of thousands of black men and women from all over the world. So that was almost unthinkable for that day and age. So during that convention, they drafted a number of articles and declarations and Declaration 39 stated that the colors red, black and green would be the colors of the African race. Notice written of the African 
race, the black race, not the African Americans. This isn't the African American flag. This is the flag that came to represent the global Pan-African movement. And it is from Declaration 39 that the red, black, and green or RBG flag came into existence. And since then, a number of African nations have adopted the colors as their symbol of sovereignty. When you look at the flag of Kenya, when you look at the flag of Liberia, when you look at the flag of the Biafra movement, you'll see the colors red, black, and green. In fact, the more African nations that you look at, the more you'll see that these colors, red, black, and green, and sometimes either gold or white, are represented as well. So not only has this flag been used to represent nations, it's been used to represent the thousands of organizations that are working towards the ultimate Pan-African goal of a nation of our own. And I have to emphasize that before I go on. The point of Pan-Africanism is sovereignty. It is establishing a Pan-African state. You can call it the United States of Africa. You can call it whatever you want. But the entire goal of the Pan-African movement was establishing our own state. I'll do a recording for another article that we wrote called How Pan-Africanism Lost Its Way that illustrates that point. But here's what the RBG flag means to the Pan-African movement and to Pan-Africanism. It's more than just a novelty. It's more than just a flag. It was and is meant to represent a nation. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can a flag represent a nation that doesn't exist? Well, when the RBG flag was created, our ancestors understood the fact that a United States of Africa did not yet exist. But they also understood the power that flags have when they represent a collective identity. They understood the power that having a visual representation of black nationalism could have. And so the RBG flag is meant to remind us as Pan-Africans of what we're working towards and fighting for, and that is sovereignty. It reminds us that we're not fighting to assimilate into other nations and we're not working to be better citizens in countries that do not represent our beliefs or values. We're working towards a Pan-African state built on the laws, the representation, and the values that truly represent who we are. Now, why were the colors red, black, and green chosen for our flag? To break it down simply, red represents the blood, black represents the soil, and green represents the wealth and prosperity of Africa and its people. So when we think about red, we think of aggression, we think of momentum, we think of blood. That red in our RBG flag represents the blood of our martyrs, the hundred million men and women who have shed their blood and given their lives for the cause of liberty, unification, and redemption. This is happening to this very day. In fact, as I record this, one of the trending hashtags on Twitter is Antoine Rose, a 17-year-old boy who was shot in the back by police in the United States of America. And we've just finished the anniversary of the Soweto massacre that was started when hundreds of youths were killed or injured protesting the apartheid South African regime. Red compels us to remember these martyrs, to remember the Sandra Blands, to remember the Trayvon Martins, to remember the Ayanna Stanley Joneses and the Troy Davises and the Denmark Vesees, along with the Patrice Lumumbas and the hundreds and thousands of other martyrs who have given their lives. And not only that, but red represents the passion and the aggression born within every black man and woman. The life forces that have to be tapped into to release our collective energy that we're going to need to tap into if we're gonna achieve our divine purpose on this planet. When we look at black, black represents the color of the infinite. It represents the mysterious, the unified, the definitive. Black is the color of the soil of the Nile Valley and it represents melanin. What is melanin? It is the chemical that gives color to the original people and it's so much more. Black compels us to remember that we, black men and women, are all unified as members of one family. It represents the uniformity of our intention. And it also represents the void from which we must emerge if we're able to lead and enlighten the rest of the world. Green represents fertility, productivity, 
and prosperity. It represents the fertile cradle of Africa in all her prosperous glory. There is no argument that Africa is the wealthiest continent on the face of the earth, and this wealth must be reclaimed. For us to ascend to our position once again as the leaders of humanity. You know what? As a side note, I'm going to take a quick departure, family. And I know this isn't a podcast. I'm supposed to be reading an article, but I can't help myself. The movie Black Panther inspired all these uh, um, brothers and sisters to imagine what if we had our own Wakanda, right? The thing that blows my mind is we have our own Wakanda. There are trillions upon trillions of dollars of wealth in African soil and every other nation on the planet realizes this, which is why they're in a mad scramble to continue neocolonialism on the African continent. China's extracting immense amounts of wealth from the ground in Africa. So is the West. If we were to use that wealth for our own benefit, we would have Wakanda and the rest of the world would be a third world country. But that's a sidebar. I'll, I'll save that for a podcast. And if you want to hear the podcasts, panafricanalliance.com forward slash VIP. Anyway, moving forward, here's what you can do to honor the red, black, and green flag. Instead of celebrating these European Independence Days, I want you to make a commitment to celebrating the universal African flag on August the 17th. All right. And every day. Fly an RBG flag in front of your home. Buy an RBG flag and wave it proudly in front of your homes. And you can find out where to buy an RBG flag at panafricanalliance.com forward slash RBG. Not only that, I mean, rock your RBG, your RBG jewelry, rock your RBG t-shirts, your clothing. Make sure it stays in the front of your mind. Use it as an opportunity to talk to other brothers and sisters about what this movement means. And this is important. Whenever there is a meeting of the people, make sure there's RBG flag present. If you're at a community event and you don't see an RBG flag, ask the organizers why the colors aren't present. Having a flag brings the spirit of our ancestors and clarity of our purpose to that space. So make sure there's a flag present. And anytime you do a, uh, anything in public, that includes YouTube videos, put an RBG flag in your background family. You might notice that almost every video that we produce for UBA, United Black America, one of our, our organizations, had an RBG flag in the background, all right? Wear the colors as often as you can. Look, I never leave my house without wearing something from the African continent. It could be a, a beaded necklace, legit, not those plastic beads. It could be a, a, a piece of jewelry, but typically it's my RBG dog tag, which by the way, you can get for free as a supporter of Pan-African Alliance. Go to panafricanalliance.com forward slash VIP. And uh, if you're a Sutin level supporter, we'll send you out an RBG dog tag for free. So that's it, family. Red represents the color of our blood that has been shared by, shed by our ancestors and that we share. Black represents our melanin and our history. And green represents the color of the land that must be redeemed and reclaimed for us as the original people of the world. They have their flags, family. Now it's time for you to stand behind yours. Again, I'm Asad Malik, PanAfricanAlliance.com, Abibi Fahodier.